hello everybody welcome to my channel my name is Megan and today is a video of books so let's just get on with it the first book we have is The Dressmaker's Gift by Fiona Valpi this is a World War II fiction book obviously because I love World War II fiction so this is really good it's about three women that work in a dress shop in World War II in Paris but then one of the women's granddaughter then moves to live there in like 2016. It's her basically revisiting her grandmother's past and seeing the story of them and um, because they were spies, sort of spies or part of their resistance or something. And then also what they have is the like mirroring of events because she's in Paris and obviously uh, a couple of years ago there were loads of terrorist attacks in France as a whole and um, so it's, it's what her grandmother went through and then mirrored in what she's going through. Yeah, that's quite an interesting spin on things. I would definitely recommend it. It's got like a good feel to it and it's really short so if you're not too much of a reader I think it's always good to start with a shorter book because I, I think that's a top tip really because if you are not much of a reader but you want to get into reading and you go in a really long book you won't feel an accomplishment for ages like the accomplishment of finishing a book is really nice and sort of pushes you to read more but if you don't get that for so long then yeah it wouldn't be as good so that's why I definitely recommend if you want to get into reading start with a shorter book also same with chapters that's why I like I I'll read it anyway but I do get frustrated if a book's chapters are too long because <laughs> I'm a child okay, and then this one is called wish w wish you were here by Mike Gale a load of I just threw it that's fine a load of people in my village are putting boxes on the front doorsteps and full of free stuff that they're getting rid of I mean it could just be a parcel they've received but I assumed it was help yourself so I helped myself right before like a five mile walk and I didn't have a bag so I just carried this the whole way and it was such a good book it's basically about these three men they were friends in college or uni and now it's a few years on and one of them his girlfriend has just left him and then another one is just sort of like a party animal always up for a group thing and then another one is really religious but there's stuff going on in his life that we'll find out later in the book but basically because of everything going on they decide that it's time for a lad's holiday so they go on this holiday and lots of topsy-turvy things happen there's no murder mystery to it it's it's just like it's kind of relatable yeah and it's a bit of a romance as well and then the boy who's a, the man who's a bit of a party animal his fiance turns up and she's like what are you doing just checking that he's behaving and it's really good and it's funny it's very light-hearted it's funny because they're in their late 30s and they've gone to it's a resort in Greece that's like renowned for being for young people next we have which was also in the box that I found that book but I already had this book and I'd already read it but just shows to sh goes to show the house that I took that book from have good reading taste this is Blood Orange by Harriet Tice and this was a very good book I read this on the train on my way home from uni it's basically about this woman I want to say she's a barrister or a lawyer or a solicitor or one of the three but we'll go with barrister she is working on a case where a woman has killed her husband basically and she's very honest that she's killed him and when they start to ask her questions it becomes very apparent that she was being abused but she can't see it she seems to be a bit oblivious to the fact that she was being abused and the main character in the book is like how can this happen to her and she can't see it but the twist is a lot of it reflects the barrister's life as well so then it's sort of like as a reader we're saying that to the barrister of what's happening in her own relationship the barrister's saying it to the woman that it's quite good because you're basically feeling the same thing she's feeling but she's no idea that her life is a bit of a mess as well so it's good it's got a bit of a well obviously because it's about a woman that killed her husband there is murder mystery to it but then it goes further on and I definitely recommend this it is not creepy I love a murder mystery but I don't like to read them too often because they do creep me out a bit so this one wasn't creepy though this was more like 
gripping. Next we have A Silver Bay by Jojo Moyes. It's, it starts off as such a nice homely book with a homely feel. Do you know what I mean? And then, so basically the story is, it's a man and he goes to live for a while in this little marine village called Silver Bay in Australia. And he becomes friends he get, with all the locals, he gets a little bit of a love interest. And this place is quite down in the dumps, don't get much business, but they're happy with it that way. Whereas he is actually working for a big British corporation that want to build a massive holiday resort in Silver Bay. So then things get a bit upsetting, the romance he had is over and he has to go back home to his fiance who he doesn't really love and then he has to sort of right his wrongs and it's like a big challenge. But then the other half of the story is the woman that he had the romance with in Australia. She has a secret and she just lives there with her daughter but Everybody knows that she lost a child and that's why her and her daughter moved to Australia because they're from the UK But no one knows the full circumstances, but she can't leave Australia She can barely leave the bay she's in and she's very stressed and she doesn't want the media coverage from for the uh, Resort and things like that. So things are getting very stressed on that end. So it's like they're both storylines to books that are quite common but to put them together is great. We have this book which is called The Bookshop of the Broken Hearted by Robert Hillman. I did not know this was a book about World War II but it is. I was not aware of it. It's basically about this man. His wife leaves him with a child. He's a farmer and he befriends an older woman. I think she's older. He befriends an older woman who has a bookshop. I'd say one of the main storylines is him and his stepson and the fight with the mother who's basically part of a cult and she wants the child with her in the cult but she's not a very good mother so he wants him with him and then there's this woman who was in Auschwitz that owns the bookshop that he sort of has a romantic fling with. I actually left this in because I didn't think it was that great of a book. I think it was a good book but in terms of the World War II storyline it's set in the 60s but in terms of the World War II storyline that they go back to, I didn't think it was that good in comparison to other war books I've read. I sound a bit obsessive. But I just felt like some facts were wrong, they couldn't even spell crack off. I can't say it, but I'm not writing a book about it, so, <laughs> you know. Although the storyline was good and it did get better as I read on, I felt the the links to World War II were a bit naff for a book about World War II. I felt it wasn't educated. Not that I'm an expert, but do you know what I mean? A bit of a flimsy thing. That's what I'll say about that. It wasn't a bad book. There were just some things I was like, if you're going to write a book about it, get your facts right. I have one more book as well. I don't have the copy of it because it was a lend, but it was called The Woman of War. I think I'll put in a picture um, and this book was really good it was basically about a woman in outfits is she in outfits I'm pretty sure she's in a concentration camp and she's a midwife and she got put in there because when Germany said if you have disabled babies you have to report them to us and we'll deal with them she did not report and she would let mothers take their babies away take them home and keep it secret but then for doing that she gets put in a camp but then she's in the camp basically doing her midwifery job still in these awful conditions and someone comes and they're like um we've heard you're a great midwife we have a job for you and it turns out they want her to be the midwife for Hitler's mistress. Now, I don't think it's a true story. <laughs> it's fiction, but it's really good. And then there's a twist at the end that I never saw coming. I would recommend that. And I think it's one of them books, like many of the books I'm reading at the moment, none of these, but lots of the books I'm reading at the minute are ones that, because of the cover, don't do that well. Like if my auntie hadn't lended me that book, loaned me that book, I probably wouldn't have picked it in a shop. I think you can, you know like the covers that you see in the works and things like that, um, but it was a really good book. I just think, honestly, I never thought of it. You know you just say don't judge a book by its cover when you're talking about things in real life, but you don't realise how much you do judge 
actual books by their cover and I read so many books lately and I just think damn your publisher really let you down this is such a nightmare but hey ho so yeah that's definitely another one I would recommend I think that's it for my book recommendations of the lockdown library this week I hope you enjoyed if you did don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you in another video bye Thank you.